Welcome, I'm David Paul. And I'm Joel Stangby. And we'll be talking about how a breathalyzer works. As you walk into the gymnasium for your senior prom, you see a police officer and a line of students at the entrance. What's the holdup? You get to the officer and she says to blow into the tube. What could she be measuring? She exclaims, 0.12, you're out of here. How could she know? Allow me to explain, said the officer. So, how does a breathalyzer work? Ethanol is oxidized and produced in an electrical current that is processed into a BAC. The fuel cell breathalyzer is a cheaper and more accurate option, which is good for prom. A redox reaction is shown below, and the sensor is the electrolytic cell because that senses the breath and oxidizes ethanol, which creates the, an electric current, which is kind of the transducer. So the electrolytic cell is also the transducer. The signal is conditioned by a processor which turns that electric current into a BAC. The output stage is the LCD display that turns that, that electric current into a number which the police officer can, can then determine whether or not someone is intox intoxicated. How do we calibrate this device? Depending on the level of calibration desired, either a wet bath or a dry gas calibration can be used. The breathalyzer is given a known input of alcohol and generates an alcohol curve which compares the actual reading to the standard and calibrates itself until it is within plus or minus 0.005. The wet bath calibration simulator, simulator heats up a precisely mixed solution of alcohol and water which si simulates the breath of an intoxicated person. This alcoholic va vapor that's produced can then be measured by the wet bath simulator and then calibrated and create an, an alcohol curve which the breathalyzer can use to compare to its own reading and calibrate itself. The dry gas calibration uses a pressurized amount of alcohol and regulator to see if the breathalyzer can detect the set amount of alcohol. It's similar to the wet bath calibration method, but it's a little bit different and can be used for more coarse calibration of the breathalyzer. Once again, there is air and uncertainty in the fuel cell. Several different substances that aren't drinking alcohol can actually provide the intoxicated effect, such as mouthwash or tobacco. A false positive can also be given due to a high body temperature, due to a fever. Blood alcohol content can be affected by your breathing pattern as well. So if you breathe more strongly into the tube, it could give a false positive of more alcohol. The uncertainty is usually plus or minus 0.1% on most of these devices. Oh no! A police officer pulls you over as you're driving because they think you're driving drunk. The police officer makes you do field sobriety tests and you actually pass. The officer is not convinced, so he says, you're coming downtown. Once you get to the station, you have to blow into this big box, kind of like a typewriter. And a couple minutes later, the officer says, okay, you pass, you're good to go. How does he know? The science behind it is that the police officer used something called an intoxilizer which is a more accurate breathalyzer. This type of breathalyzer uses infrared spectroscopy, which identifies molecules based on the way they absorb infrared light. Samples can be saved for later, which make it good for law purposes. In the picture below, a lamp at A generates a broadband infrared beam. The infrared beam passes through the sample chamber at D and is focused by a lens at E onto a spinning filter wheel. The spinning filter wheel sends narrow band filters at F spe specific for the wavelengths of the bonds in ethanol. The light passing through each filter is detected by the photocell at G, where it is converted to an electric pulse. The electrical pulse is relayed to the microprocessor at H, which interprets the pulses and calculates the BAC based on the absorption of infrared light. Using this analysis, the sensor would be E, the transducer would be F, Signal conditioning could be done at G, and the output stage would be H. As a quick note, at F, the different filters can be used to filter out things that might mess up the alcohol content, such as tobacco or different amounts of alcohol in the person's mouth. Now let's take a look at the calibration of the intoxilizer. So several known amounts of alcohol are sent through the intoxilizer, and the output reading is then calibrated due to that. This has to use a multi-point or non-linear calibration. For example, if a 0.05 blood alcohol content absorbs X amounts units of IR energy, 
a 0.2 blood alcohol content would not necessarily absorb a 4x units of IR energy, thus why we have to use a nonlinear calibration. Next, let's look at the air of the intoxilizer. Inaccurate readings can be caused by different diets or people with diabetes due to excess acetone in their breath. Mouth alcohol can also have a similar effect if the subject had been recently drinking some of the alcohol directly in their mouth and breath could affect the accuracy of the machine. Now looking at the uncertainty in the intoxilizer, nonlinearity error can be present. However, many other errors and these uncertainties due to these errors can be negated because of the method in which the intoxilizer measures the BAC. The uncertainty in most, in most intoxilizers is found to be 0.01% and this is the most accurate of the breathalyzers. However, they are much more expensive and very big and hard to move around. So they're often used in police stations and for law purposes. Thanks for listening to our presentation. Hope you enjoyed it.